Good morning, friends. It is Tuesday. It is the 111th day of Russia's invasion into Ukraine. And there's so much to encourage ourselves with. There is so many positive signs of what God is doing in the midst of a very dark situation. But there are also some very key things we need to pray for very intently today. And so, as always, before we get to those, I want to just bring you up to date on the good things that are happening. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, our friends Vladimir and Lilia, after not being able to get through to occupied territories for some time, have found ways in to minister to those who are trapped uh, behind uh, enemy lines who are in the occupied territories of Kherson. And they're continuing to look for ways to reach even Mariupol and Militopol. Pray for them that they would be able to reach them because those people are suffering. They're suffering without, oftentimes without food, without without medicine, without water. And Russia has made it clear that they will not provide those things. What they will provide is propaganda and uh, intensive programs to get people to accept their domination. So pray, pray for the church to continue to arise and to boldly go where no one else can or will go. Praise God for their courage as they continue to serve all across the front to all those who are hurting and to the refugees in their own city of Nipra. Uh, also, um, continue to pray for Severna Donetsk. Uh, they continue to stand. Russia has created massive assaults uh, in all around there, but when they have attempted to come at Severna Donetsk from other directions, that still continues to fail. And one of the most clear signs that Russia it does not see a win possible, even though Russia yesterday did sever the last bridge, the last connection to the defenders uh, in within Severodonetsk. Even so, Russians are now setting up defensive positions. They're setting up fortified positions. Why? Because they're afraid of the Ukrainians. They're afraid. And so pray that the Ukrainians would be able to support those who are in uh, the Azat um, chemical plant there, the, both the civilians and the soldiers. They would, have, they would be able to continue to be supplied. Uh, as I, they demonstrated, they were able to continue to supply uh, Mariupol. Um, and and the Azovstal uh, plant there that they would be able to be continue to be supported. There would become breakthroughs, but also as we keep saying, and I'm going to repeat this throughout, that the West would provide the heavy weapons needed to push you, uh, Russia back. That's the key. That's the key element. Um, again, another area where they were trying to come at Severna Donetsk was on the side of Papasna and Arhikova and uh, Zolotoy. They were pushed back in Bakhmut. They attempted, Russians attempted again a run at that highway, run at, at the city of Bakhmut, but got nowhere. Uh, in Slavyansk, uh, they again, they, at, they attacked um, in the direction of Davenki for about the fifth or sixth day straight. Still no success. Uh, in Kharkov, uh, the uh, Ukrainian servicemen shot down a Russian uh, KA-52 uh, helicopter. Um, in Chernihiv, they shot down a missile. Um, in uh, Achakovsk, uh, oh, I'll get to that in a second. In Hel Himelitsy, uh, they shot down a cruise missile. That's in the western portion of Ukraine. And the far western, they shot down a cruise missile over this over uh, Zolochiv. And so they're, the Russians are shoot, they're just shooting for everything right now. And as I've mentioned, they're running out of supplies. They're using older and older wep weapons. They're using, I mean, the amazing part is they're using Toshka, but then they're also been using the, uh, the uh, KH-22 uh, missiles. All of these things are mothballed. They're using uh, T-62 tanks. They are running out. This has to come to the fore. There has to be this recognition of how low to the bottom Bottom, Russia is because there are increasing voices that are pushing uh, for uh, negotiations with you, Russia uh, before Russia gets defeated. Ooh, 
Huh. One of the cool things, uh, this may not strike you as cool, but it, the, the Ukrainians sunk one of their own ships uh, in the Achakovsk um, harbor there. That's the harbor that leads to Kherson, but it's also kind of the bridge to uh, Mykolaiv. They actually t they sunk one of their own anti-submarine corvettes. Why? Because it blocks that area from Russia being attempting a uh, a um, an amphibious assault. Remember, they've still got six divisions on these twelve BDKs with um, um, and uh, and guided missile cruisers in the western portion of the Black Sea, and yet they can't get close to land. They can't get within seventy kilometers because um, Ukraine now has those uh, those missile setups with the harpoons and their Neptunes to be able to keep them. So they're trying to figure out a way to use them, and it looks like. The Ukrainians are on to them that they were attempting an amphibious assault towards Mykolaiva and they blocked that from happening. So continue to pray for these kind of genius, again, bloodless resolutions. Another area that um, is, is um, Donetsk, there have been massive um, uh, uh, artillery and uh, missile attacks from Ukraine into Donetsk target, in the last 24 hours targeting logistics. Again, continue to pray for bloodless resolutions. Pray for these kind of things because without missiles, without bombs, without our shells, without food, without parts, they cannot kill people. Continue to pray for that. Um, and pray for missiles to blow up and not uh, in the air. Pray for all kinds of, of, of just breakdowns in that process. But as always, what we talk about is the truth being revealed is always going to be on the side of light. And so today, the the uh, the heads of that supposed uh, um, uh, Donetsk People's Republic reached out to the Kremlin asking for more help, more military help. Now, this shows you, we've talked about this, that the snake would turn on itself. The Kremlin, Putin's uh, people, said, uh, uh you're calling the wrong number. I'm so sorry. You need to go talk to the military. What is he doing? He's throwing the military under the bus. He's throwing the military under the bus. But on top of that, the military and the Kremlin has just been using these uh, DNR, uh, Donetsk People's Republic, Lugansk People's Republic recruits. These are people who have been dragged from their homes against their will. They're using them as cannon fodder. And so, but again, this sign that they are turning on each other, that they're continuing to throw each other under the bus is so important. Man, actually, and the Donetsk People's Republic Defense Minister, Girkin Strokov, I've mentioned it before, he is a military genius. Uh, he's been a voice for truth throughout this because he is an ideologue. He believes 100% that they it is their right, their calling to take all of Ukraine, and for, while we're at it, all of Eastern Europe. He is rabid, but so as a result, he continues to call out clear uh, problems within the Russian military, and basically, he called out the entire Russian brass and the Kremlin for being weak, wusses, completely that they're not doing this seriously they need to be all in these kind of this kind of rhetoric because what he wants is not sustainable is not sustainable he he wants a massive all-out war which russia fundamentally can't do right now but he rightly recognizes that's the only way russia can win and so he's he's calling them out he's calling them you know just wimps and and all kinds of stuff and uh and his he he's right and it's getting voices in the military going yeah they, he's right the 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 kremlin is not supporting us yeah he's right they're not getting us what we need to fight he's not and this kind of division is so helpful, so helpful. Um, uh, again, um, one other area that, that we're seeing a massive uh, breakdown, believe it or not, is in Russian oil. Now, I mentioned this. Many of the... the um, of the sanctions and embargoes and stuff are partial to Europe, but Russia turned around and they're selling oil left and right to China and India. They're doing sea transfers, all this kind of stuff. But here's the interesting thing. You can only sell oil if you have oil. Russia's exports of oil have dropped 12%, even though the demand has increased. India is actually asking for more oil than Russia can deliver. What's happening to this oil? Where is it going? When sanctions hit, 
one of the sanctions that happened early on was on oil production equipment. And oil, Russian oil and gas is much heavier than most other oil and gas and it requires very specific, very delicate equipment to be able to extract it. Well, that's only provided by a couple companies like for instance, Americans Halliburton country, uh, company. Well, when they pull out, Russia, basically, whatever they had of stocks of parts and stuff, that's what they went through. Well, guess what? It's all breaking down. They don't have anything to replace it. They are, they've already faced a 12% reduction. They're going to face much, much more. And so again, without oil income, Russia cannot fight. And so, uh, you know what? Even when people are buying it, they can't sell it. Another great thing is the sanctions on uh, the banks have finally taken effect. EU shank, the EU has sanctioned Sberbank and the Russian Agricultural Bank and the Russian C Moscow Credit Bank, and they've been cut off from SWIFT. This is massive. This is huge. It's hard to ex express, but without that, any of the companies that operate on that are unable, even if they are not sanctioned, they are unable to pay their debts and they then go into default. As I mentioned before, we're facing default. I think the latest I heard was June 27th, technical default goes into effect. And at that point, wow, the amount of pressure that it exerts on Russia is unimaginable. And so um, the pressure between now and the 27th, right? That's just, that's two weeks. In that time, you're gonna watch the pressure go to 11 on one side from the people who are trying not to lose their stuff, the oligarchs, the bureaucrats, and on the other side, the people like Girkin who are pushing for all out war, the pressure is gonna increase and Putin is caught in the middle because he can't satisfy either one. And so continue to pray that that pressure will do what? It will create a space for a Daniel to walk through the mist, a person of righteousness that God can rise in the midst, who can walk in between these two warring factions and bring justice, bring truth, and a two. Because uh, America has said this, the only way they would consider a lot, dropping the sanctions, allowing them to pay their bond is if one, Russia completely mo remo is removed from Ukraine, or two, Putin is removed. And so pray that again, through this process, in the same way they tried to take out Gorbachev, the same way that there, there would be a, a coup that would allow a Daniel to come into effect that would not create chaos, but bring order uh, and truth and righteousness into Russia. Um, a big piece of what we really need to pray to, into, though, is in the next 24 hours, we're facing a meeting that... Um, uh, What's planned is that Chancellor, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, French President Emmanuel Macron, and Italian Prime Minister Draghi are all scheduled to go to Kyiv to meet with Zelensky. Why is this important? So Germany has and France have been the biggest at dragging their feet. Technically, you know, uh, Germany, uh, they only at the last second have they ever promised any weapons and then they failed to deliver. They haven't even delivered uh, more than half of the helmets they promised before the war. They, they're um, uh, over and over and over again. In fact, what's happened is, is um, Olaf Scholz has given all these excuses of why they haven't sent weapons weapons they promised or why they can't send certain weapons. Well, even when he's been saying that, companies, individual companies said, we'll send our own stuff. The, 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 we'll send our own stuff. And the Germans said, you can't do that. You can't do that. G uh, Olaf Scholz's government said, you can't do that. As a result though, the German people are rallying behind Ukraine more and more and more, where I think we're over 80% of them like, we need to send heavy weapons. Well, as a result, Olaf Scholz, at the beginning of this, his party was in the number one most popular spot. They're now down to the third level spot. He is facing a political annihilation if he does not give in to the will of the people and back Ukraine. And yet he continues to do so. So what's going on there? Same thing with Emmanuel Macron. He's, he's, uh, he's vacillated all over the place and uh, most of the support they've given is relatively meaningless. And I want to say for Germany in particular, Germany has sent hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in euros to you, Russia during the case of this war for oil. They've been supporting the war effort. 
they've the whatever they've sent to Ukraine has been pennies by comparison. So they'll make a big deal. Well, we sent this and we sent a one billion dollars of support. Well, compare that to the hundreds of billions of dollars they've sent to Russia. So so what's going on? The same time, Draghi, the the prime minister of uh, of it's Italy. He has been on the phone. So all three of these guys are the only people other than uh, um, Helmut uh, um, um, of Austria been on the phone with Putin. They've been talking with him. They've been talking with him. They've been getting their talking points. Why are they not standing with Ukraine when their people want them to? I submit that it is very possible that one of the things that the KGB is very good at is blackmail, getting compromising information and holding it. Because for Olaf Scholz to walk, act completely contrary to his own interests politically, something else has to be going on. I do know this, that so many Germans in his party and uh, his coalition have huge business interests in Russia. So that's part of it too. But whatever it is, they seem to be intent on bringing pressure on Zelensky for negotiations. Pray instead of that, because uh, we mentioned this yesterday that Zelensky has come out with his wish list. He said, I need a thousand tanks. I need a thousand howitzers. I, I need, I, I, oh wait, I need 500 tanks. I need a thousand howitzers. I need uh, a, a thousand armored troop carriers. I need all of these things. If you want me to win, our people will give their lives, but you need to give us the stuff. Pray that they are even if they're manipulated or tricked or whatever, but they are forced into a position by their own people to come with the wish list fulfilled rather than pressure to bring uh, negotiations. Because again, you cannot negotiate with a bully. You have to defeat him in the field and then you can talk about negotiations. And so we're believing for Russia because I, as I mentioned, on all fronts, Ukraine is pushing back. Ukraine's holding fast. Everywhere they are, they're holding fast. And yet the, over and over again, you hear the news kind of highlight little places where Russia's like, we took three meters. We moved forward half a mile, right? And no, the Ukrainians can do hold back at overwhelming mean odds. So continue to pray for the narrative to hold, but particularly for that meeting tomorrow. That's a really, really, really big thing. Uh, also on the Zaporozhye front, please pray because they have faced massive shelling on 34 different uh, uh, locations today. They've been shelling in the last 24 hours, which is usually indicative of them attempting to find a break so they can push um, uh, forward there. And there have also been signs of that on the Krivirig front. So pray for those to stand fast. Now, obviously, there's always so much more to pray for. Go to ariselife.org slash Ukraine if you want to see all of these and the print form. Uh, down at the bottom, you can right-click on any of those dates and save as a PDF and print that out. But also, if you'd like to continue to help us, I, I've got to say, the it needs have not stopped. The needs have not stopped. The needs have not become less. And so if you would like to partner with us in supporting uh, Vladimir and Lilia, we're going to try to get them on for an interview very soon because they have actually, I want to tell you a little shift that has happened. They, they really realized that what, what God is doing there and they're actually building churches. They're actually, so among the refugees, among the people they're serving. So many people, many of these people who are left in these villages literally have, they have no pastors, they have no ministers, they have even no government officials sometimes. They have no one to look after them. So guess what they're doing? They're establishing churches among these people to care for the people. They are taking them from being victims and they're empowering them to minister to each other. They're, they're um, uh, the people People from Mariupol, you guys remember they did this concert to bring all these people from Mariupol together. Well, they had their third one. And what was beautiful is they had a service. They just had a church service. 150 people showed up. And afterwards, they did give out support, but only 80 of those people actually even took support. What they really wanted was community. What they really wanted was to connect, to, to, to hear the gospel, to know God's love. And so praise God, they've got this amazing... Um, we talked about this, that the end goal is not simply war to end. The end goal is revival. The end goal is God's kingdom flooding out through Ukraine, overwhelming Ukraine, establishing Ukraine in righteousness, and then flooding in and setting Russia on fire for the gospel, flooding into Belarus, flooding into Kazakhstan, flooding into Uzbekistan, flooding into Azerbaijan, uh, Turkmenistan. Uh, guys, this 
this is his goodness. And so praise God that uh, Vladimir and Lilia have caught this vision. They've got this strategy for planting churches in the very middle of what's going on. This is not a time for the church to pull back, but to press forward. And again, they need your help. So if you'd like to partner with us in that, that'd be amazing. AriseLife.org slash help Ukraine. There's a green button there. Click it. Uh, it takes you to the AriseLife.churchcenter.com. It's a safe, completely secure site to give. Uh, you can give there and 100% of what you give goes directly to them. We cover all the, f- uh, the transfer fees on both ends. That's our contribution. And, um, but also we're covering all those transfer fees, but also we are a 501c3. So if you're in the U S you will get a tax, um, uh, documents for that. I'm not sure how it works in other countries. Final thing is some of you like to give, uh, directly. We can't take uh, credit cards over the phone uh, for security reasons, but you can mail a gift. And uh, I'll try to put the, uh, in, uh, on, in a comment, I'll put the address of where to send that. And uh, you can definitely do that. Um, I believe also all the information is at arisealife.org slash give. Um, so we just love you guys. We're so grateful for each of you, for the way you continue to stand with us, with Ukraine, with Russia. Because again, it's not Russia. It is Putin. It is Putin and his cronies. And so thank you, thank you for continuing to pray because we want to see Russia delivered as well. We want to see Belarus delivered. Well, ha. <laughs> well, let me pray for you. Because listen, if you're going to go into battle, you need some, maybe you need some medical help. Maybe you need God's healing touch on your heart, your body, your mind, relationships, finances. So Lord, I just ask right now that each person right now would hearing, would experience an encounter with you like never before. Maybe that they didn't even know was possible. An encounter that blows their minds by how much you see them, you care, how much they matter to you. Let them know your love and your presence in your beautiful name. Amen. Well, listen, guys, if you uh, need prayer for anything particularly, say need prayer and one of our friends will um, uh, jump on there. Uh, and let you uh, hopefully give you some uh, pray for you. But you also, you guys can pray for each other. Um, So also, if you want to be part of one of our women's group or men's group, the women's group meant last night, it meets on Zoom. Just say women's group and uh, Mariana Sikowska or Jill Hawes will try to get you that information. But also men's group meets tonight. And uh, if you're interested in men's group, say men's group. Uh, Gary Phillips will get you all the information on that. But we love you guys so much. Um, And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Teresa, for uh, again, uh, our address. uh, I'll throw it out here is Arise Life Church. Uh, again, on any checks, make them out to Arise Life Church, but then in the note field, say Ukraine Relief Fund, and then send them to uh, Arise Life Church, 2535 Hickory Grove Road, Ackworth, Georgia, 30101. And uh, if you are sending uh, from another country, make sure it's something like an international money order or something like that that we can actually cash. Uh, again, we as soon as we get the monies, we're sending them directly through. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you guys. Have a great day.